What's up guys and girls? This is uh, part one, the fusion side or the 3D modeling side of Flower Power. So the assignment we're talking about here, so far we have identified that we want you to have some concept sketches or a an idea to start with. You could use 3D modeling program, which is what we're going to do. You could sketch on paper to start. We want you to transfer this concept to materials and then use that as a template to cut out. Uh, we are also going to look at doing a uh, plasma cut version of this if time allows. So let's get started on the fusion side. Uh, we have a new untitled document here. We're going to create a sketch. <clears throat> we can go on YZ plane. I believe it's YZ plane. And we are going to use the ellipse tool uh, for our petals. So an ellipse has two major, a major and a minor axis actually. I'll just start from the datum. Our major axis here, how long do we want the petals to be? Um, it's going to be a little bit oversized, the, the flower itself is going to be, but to think about like what would be easy to work with and easy to cut around, we'll start with four inches for the major ellipse, and then I hit the tail, oh that didn't stick, darn it. Four inches, I think I just have to click here, and then our minor ellipse here, we want this just to go uh, based on what looks good proportionally for a flower petal. So do we want a little bit fatter petal? Uh, something around there looks aesthetically pretty close. 0.9. No, 0.8. Okay, enter. I need to create a space from the bottom point here of my ellipse to where I want to create a radian of these or uh, revolve these on a centered pattern. So I have to put an, uh, something to revolve around here, a point to revolve around. And that's going to determine, well, how much space do I have in the middle? Um, oh, let me just do it, and maybe that will make more sense. I'm going to create a point in order to revolve around. How far do I want that to be away from here? Each one of these darker squares right now is a half inch. So I could go about that distance right there. I'm going to click and create a point. And the next thing I'll do is create a pattern, a circular pattern. First thing I have to select is what do I want to pattern. It's that profile of the ellipse. What do I want to pattern around? This is where I need that center point to choose. And then I can bump this up and I'm going to put these up until this is not a big enough window. Until I get spacing enough that if I laid another one over the top of this and offset them, they would they would fill in or cover these gaps. So if you can imagine that, and potentially we do three of these. Um, I'm, I've been doing about 10 petals right now. So I'm going to click OK. Now these are all independent of each other. They're not touching. And so I have to do something to tie these together because I don't want to cut out 10 individual petals and then try and fasten them. I want to tie it together. So I'm just going to do a centered circle. I want to tie all these together. Something around, this is the center of my flower, right? So two inches is pretty big, but proportional to what like a daisy would look like or a brown-eyed Susan, I'm going to say I'm going to be somewhere around two inches. I want to make sure these all touch. Click OK. Now I can go back and trim all these. If I hit the T key on the computer or if I go under modify or the scissors, that'll give me the trim function. And I'm going to trim away the bottoms of these ellipses. Ooh, that didn't work. Undo. Command Z. There we go. T. There we go. I should be modeling with the mouse. I'm a trackpad modeler right now. It doesn't like removing some constraints. I think it's based on the distance from these, but it should still be okay. And it's definitely ghosting because I got like a C-clip from some other project in there right now. So a few other modifications that I'm going to make. Uh, once I extrude this, then I can go in and fillet these so they're rounded because I want these to come down and meet. Um, and I just used an ellipse. The other modifications I can make right now is I could trim out these portions so that it all extrudes at once. I don't think it's really going to matter. 
I'm going to hit the E key for extrude. <clears throat> and it asks me what do I want to extrude. And I want to extrude everything here. Yeah, it's struggling right now. in the middle. I always go to home view to extrude. And I'm going to do eighth inch 0.125. It's a little thicker than our typical sheet metal, but it's not going to matter because we're just grabbing the surface. That looks good. Click OK. And now I've got something that potentially could be plasma cut or used as a guide for a cutout. Uh, the last thing I want to do is I want to fill it these inside um, Oh, what are these called? I don't know where they join, where it meets. And under Modify, once I'm in 3D, I can use the Fillet tool. This is going to take a little bit of zooming in and out, and you could just do a, a number of them that you can see and then jump back and grab them, but my computer is really struggling right now, so it's having a hard time moving around and zooming. I want to grab these edges. Look at that. I can see through it. That's kind of cool. I should be able to grab all these in. And this is more for the plasma cutter than it is for the uh, hand cut version because we're not going to be able to bring those down to a rounded point for the hand cut version anyway. 0.10 looks wonderful. Return. Waiting for that to process the fillets. Okay, I'll go to my home icon again. So in theory here, I have a template to use if I bring this into a working drawing. And I also have a surface that I can pull a DXF file from. So let's do working drawing first. If we recall from here, we should probably save this before we get any farther. <clears throat> and this is uh, 4 by... 0.8 ellipse flower in metal art sculpture. Now that's saved. Oh, it didn't like those decimal numbers. There we go. Under file, go to a new drawing. I'm going to go from a template just because I have one. You can go from scratch and do an A sized 11 by 8.5. Click OK. Okay, I have to switch my view to a top view, I believe, in order to see this in the orientation I want. And then my scale, I should be do, able to do one-to-one -one or actual. Ooh, that's a little big to fit on here. That's not good. So that I'm going to have to change this, and I think I can get away with a prescribed one, I would need like a, I can't do a custom one, 1 to 2 is going to be half scale, maybe I can, oh yeah, 1 to 1 1.5, I'm basically trying to fill the page here with about the size of a flower that I want to make, okay, so I just changed that to be a custom scale, I'm going to place this by clicking, click OK, um, I could change this to be solid, just to make it easier to cut out. All right, and waiting for this to clear up. I'm going to then print this and use this as my guide for my cutout. As long as we're in here, we're doing it all in one. Let's go back to our working drawing and talk about how do we get a DX, uh, not our working drawing, our model, how do we get a DXF file from this to take over to the plasma cutter? Uh, to do that, we are going to go into Sketches, and we only have one sketch here. We've saved this, so we're going to right-click on Sketch 1, choose as Save as DXF. I want you to be specific in naming these so that we can 
when these come over to the uh, one machine that we have to cut these, we know whose project it is. So I'm going to say Schulte uh, Flower V1, first version. It's going to go to my downloads folder. I'm going to have to transfer this to a shared location so that we can get it onto a flash drive. So let's click Save. That's going to push out a Surface uh, DXF file off of that Surface. And then uh, the next steps in this process are to get it into our plasma cutting, our, our software that will create G-code and write the pathway to cut these out.